On this week's NFE SD and Reality Check, we talk with ACG Research on some of the CapEx and OpEx challenges facing mobile operators in their move towards virtualization. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Hello, welcome. My name is Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News. Thanks for joining us on this week's NFE SDN Reality Check. This week, we are joined by Robert Heim, who is the uh, Principal Analyst at ACG Research, to talk a bit about the uh, financial implications when it comes to the deployment of, of NFE and SDN. Hey, Robert, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this time. Great, great. Well, I know you guys recently put out uh, some information, uh, uh, kind of a paper looking at uh, the app, the uh, OpEx and CapEx challenges when it comes to uh, the deployments of NFE and SDN for operators. It's a very interesting read, I have to say. Uh, it's obviously a topic uh, I've talked to a lot of people about, and it's, it's a challenge for a lot of these operators because that's, that's a big part of their decision making is, is the financial aspects of, of virtualization. And so hopefully to get some, from you some, some insight on that. So maybe start off with, I guess, uh, you know, I guess how should talking operators look at, the, at this, this trade-off between CapEx and OpEx when it comes to uh, their deployment plans for NFE and SDN and virtualization uh, platforms? Uh, I understand. And as you, um, as you know, and we, we know, uh, th this isn't a, a technology that is going to a greenfield environment, you know. So the assumption is that everyone has an existing infrastructure and they're at a decision uh, point where, uh, you know, they have, uh, you know, there's, they've been discussing the merits of uh, SDN and NFE based uh, infrastructure. Um, but then there are cases where, um, you know, you, you have an infrastructure, existing infrastructure with a present mode of operation and uh, depending on, you know, your goals and uh, your um, services that you want to offer to the, to your subscriber pool, whether they're uh, end user consumer customers, subscribers, or uh, business subscribers, uh, you may want to continue with a PMO because it'll be more cost effective for the next few years. And then you can also uh, try to see what happens to the others basically as they do this. Now, uh, and if, let me give you an example. Let's say you have in your present mode of operation, you have a um, hardware Mm -hmm. that uh, has, uh, you know, has good scaling and uh, you just want to add maybe, you know, another card or another service card or some other card uh, that will give you what you need uh, with uh, your goal. So, you, you know, it, it makes sense to go ahead and do that. Now, if you want to, if you've reached a point where you, you, uh, want to, uh, you know, you don't have any more room in your hardware and, you know, no more slots. And uh, in order to go to the next step, you have to, um, you know, buy a whole new box. And that box, you're not going to be uh, populating it with all the cards, you know, with everything you need. Mm -hmm. So you're basically over provisioning at that point. And that's where the NFB, uh, you know, SDN based infrastructure comes in. And so you do have an initial investment that you have to put in there uh, that may be a little bit higher than, uh, you know, uh, just the, you know, to, to get the, uh, just the card if you had, yeah. you had the slot, but it would be a lot less if you had to buy a full, uh, you know, full box and not use a lot of slots. So in that respect, uh, you know, it, it's good to bite the bullet, if you will, <laughs> And, um, you know, go ahead and do that. And But you have to be, you know, obviously the um, uh, uh, hardware commoditization will come in very handy in terms of CapEx. As we all know, you know, uh, x86-based uh, servers are ubiquitous and very cost effective. Mm -hmm. And the software that running on them are, is, not going is not necessarily going to be any cheaper than the software that you would pay uh, for the... Um, uh, you know, for the PMO. Yeah. However, it makes it a lot easier. First of all, you don't have to over provision. You can, you get what you need. And as you, um, you know, as you grow, you can scale up or scale out, add more memory, add more connections, very, very simply and very quickly. And uh, so that's, you know, that part is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, be, 
you know, we can do analysis. For example, I can sit down and do an analysis for a, a particular PMO and show you, well, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. So, yeah, that's basically the uh, gist of it. Yeah, yeah, very interesting because again, it doesn't like a lot of operators. They are kind of at that at that point, maybe in their deployment plans, where they are perhaps like you're saying, maxing out their current infrastructure, and perhaps it doesn't make sense to go to virtualization. But if they're not maxing out their infrastructure, you know, you've got this great equipment that's working, it's scalable, uh, it's been reliable. Uh, there's no reason to really throw that away if you don't really need to yet. So that's that's yeah, kind of the, exactly the exactly. You know, um, I don't. No one's going to throw away anything. No one's going to rip out anything. You know, you you uh, even even if they're fully depreciated, they this uh, it's you know it becomes a cash cow, and you're going to use it and uh, continue offer to offer the services that you used to with the with the uh, infrastructure that you have. Now, if you're a large uh, tier one uh, service provider, for example, obviously you want to uh, want to make sure that you don't uh, get behind the curve, and uh, you know you know some of your uh, Competitors have signaled uh, clearly, actually, that they are going this route, and uh, but you know the migration will take some time, of course, for them to uh, you know get to the yeah. point where they're fully uh, virtualized. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Now, I know one thing you mentioned too, kind of in the report, was you know the the, the importance, I guess, and the value of uh, of service innovation gains. I mean, obviously, as you move towards virtualization, it allows operators to be maybe a little more agile in rolling out services. Uh, that you know that that can compete against over the top players or whatever it is out in the marketplace. It allows greater agility there and, and maybe some service innovation. How important is that part when it comes to I guess taking into account the costs associated with with this move towards virtualization? And obviously, there is some additional revenue generation possibilities there. Exactly, and and I think that's the uh, basic point in my opinion. That's the major point in going uh, with SDN virtualization uh, uh, route. And uh, you know what it offers, as I said a little earlier, it offers you uh, to provision what you need. In addition, the service velocity is uh, fa greatly enhanced. You know, we uh, I've been involved in studies where uh, you know we would, uh, in order to uh, introduce a new service, uh, you would have to sit down with um, your colleagues, all the other C levels, go over the project uh, plan and uh, figure out how many uh, uh, man hours is going to take to a uh, person hours excuse me is yeah. going to take to take uh, to take you to finish to the finish line basically and that uh, you know that could be you know that could be a very long cycle in terms of internal operations so if i am the cio and i want to do uh, you know, into, uh, I'm CMO, excuse me, I'm a CMO and mm -hmm. I say, wow, I have a brilliant idea. I want to uh, offer these services. And if I am able to do this, I will make this kind of projected revenue. And, uh, you know, this, the payback time could be in a couple of years or whatever. The, the, and then the CIO folks come, you know, come in and say, well, this is going to take anywhere from nine months to 12 months just to deploy. And then, you, you run the risk that after you've deployed it, it may not really catch on fire. You know, you, you may, it, it's ha it has happened before. It's oh, not sure. your fault. Yeah. You've done your homework, you've done your due diligence, but it happens. But with this, uh, when you, uh, with uh, SDN and NFV, you reduce that time frame to such a low uh, level that first of all, you don't need to seek internal uh, agreement. You can just use, um, I don't want to use the word petty cash, but you know, it's not going to be very expensive. Sure, to do sure. that. In addition, uh, uh, you know, you, you can, you have the luxury to, to fail. Basically you have the luxury to say, okay, you know, I'm going to invoke, I'm going to bring this service up. I'm going to test it with a, uh, uh, you know, my, a certain subset of my pool of subscribers, see what happens. If I like it, I can expand it and I can expand it really quickly. If I don't, if it doesn't catch fire, then I'll just move on to the next, uh, to the next service. So the, uh, that, in that respect, I think uh, NFV and SDN uh, come in very handy actually. Sure, sure, it makes sense. But I, I, it seems like the vendor community has, been, has done a pretty good job in explaining, I guess, uh, the, the other financial uh, opportunities that are available with virtualization. I mean, obviously a lot of this is being driven by the operators, but it, obviously the vendors also want to, you know, you know get, get a piece of this as well. Uh, has, has, the, has the market done a pretty good job, I guess, of getting that point, point across for, for, the, for the carriers? 
Yeah, well, there are two um, there are two ways to do. It. They've done it in two different ways. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they've done it. You know, and I've been. You've been to some conferences. I've been to conferences, and you know, the word T, lower TCO is thrown around. Uh, you know, uh, like candy. If you <laughs> and you know, it, it, it's it's okay. It's all right. You you you're uh, you know you should do that because it's the uh, intuitively you say yeah of course I'm going I'm getting. Uh, much cheaper uh, hardware. I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm getting service agility, you know, and it's fine. Uh, some of the things, and I said that in my blog too, I've noticed that a lot of people miss out when you, they talk about CapEx, they only talk about the hardware part. But CapEx is anything that uh, is uh, a one-time fee, basically, that mm -hmm. you have to pay. And it could be system integration. Yep. System integrate. You have to integrate it with your present mode of operation hardware, if you will, and software. Then you have to test the whole thing, and um, so those those are costly uh, steps as well as just the cost of hardware and the software. So um, so it, when it comes to that, uh, I've noticed that you know, in, as far as the marketing part is concerned. As far as going into, as I said, you go to the, these conferences, yeah. they say, oh, we have lower, you know, it gives you lower CapEx and OpEx. But, you know, they're probably doing it against PMO. Yeah. They're not doing it against another competitor who is also offering the same thing. So, so you have to be very careful and ask, well, what is it against? Because you can't do a TCO in a vacuum, basically. You, ha you have to do it a, against a uh, second best competitor or second best alternative. Yeah. And second best alternative also has, you know, this, you know, NFV and SDN based solutions. That's number one. Number two, uh, when you, when they actually go to their customers and uh, at that point, you know, you can't do a marketing uh, job. You have, it has to be very exact. You have to show the numbers. The numbers have to jive basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you sit down and you, you know, you talk it out with your customer, and at that point, the customer will have your TCO, and they will have your. You know, they're not just going with you; they have multiple choices. They're going to, with uh, someone else's TCO, and I suspect, you know, uh, companies that offer the entire ecosystem in terms of uh, not just the hardware and the software, but other pieces, including. You know other hardware, soft and uh, you know ancillary hardware and software, plus system integration for you, plus verification and testing. All of that, in, you know, is in the ecosystem of uh, rolling out this. And uh, those are, you know, those are the companies that I believe will be more successful than you know. They say, oh, here is my box. You know, go ahead and uh, insert it yourself. And you have to go as a service provider. You have to go to a third-party system integrator or you know if you have the skill set internally you do it that way yeah yeah well that, that seems to favor obviously that maybe it's, maybe the bigger companies out there do have those kind of uh, departments that can handle that part of it as well so that's probably a, a good advantage for them but again it sounds like basically it's good to always read the fine print when it comes to these uh these yeah. cost analysis no i as i said i don't blame anyone i sure. think that's a good thing to do when you go out to conferences and you say you know, in an abstract way, you know, TCO is, you know, I have a lower TCO for you, basically. Yeah. Uh, and, but there are no numbers. I, I don't see a lot of numbers, basically, because, uh, you know, you, you, unless you say, here's the situation, and if you did it this way, you get this kind of TCO with my solution. Uh, but, you know, when you go to the sales cycle, then it becomes different. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I, I know one thing you mentioned, too, is kind of uh, there's the challenge. We kind of talked about this a little earlier, but there's that challenge of the, of the, du the double OPEX uh, situation. Yes. Again, if you're running a, a legacy network and you're running a new network. Now you're running two networks and no one ever wants to do that. That's obviously uh, we've seen right. this. That's a challenge. So how do you how do you get past that part of it? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, these um, uh, the double OPEX basically uh, manifests itself in having, you know, first of all, you have to do the system integration, you know, so you have the PMO, now you have, you want to go with NFV and SDN, you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you also need new competence, you know, you need, uh, you know, unless you're willing to train your existing folks to do that, maybe you can do that, but that's going to take some time. Uh, you know, it, when I started learning about NFV and SDN, boy, that was, the, that was a little bit difficult for me, but yeah. I'm sure for these uh, really smart uh, sales guys, sales engineers guys, sure. and 
hearing folks, you know, that's, it, it's a little easier. But so you have, so you have the uh, system integration, you have the competence costs, and you also have software upgrade costs that you have to do for both sides. So for the NFV side and SDN NFV side, you can, uh, you know, you can uh, scale up, scale down, scale out, you know, very quickly. But, uh, you know, with your PMO, uh, you, you're not able to do that. But when you when you scale up or scale out, uh, you still need to test your entire uh, you know network again. And uh, you know that, so you need two different types of uh, skill sets to do that. And so for a while, you need now. Granted, there are some you know there are uh, very good um, uh, so SDN uh, software for provisioning and orchestration mm -hmm, sure. that does both the uh, physical or traditional based uh, hardware as well as the new ones, you know, the NFV based. Now, that's really good, but you still need some learning curve to go through that. So while you're doing that, uh, you know, for a period of time, depending on how long you believe your migration is going to last, you're going to be facing that double OPEX. Obviously, the shorter the migration, you know, the, the better in terms of uh, the OPEX, but you know, it's it's not it can't be realistic if you do it in a year. I know some tier one companies who have announced um, that they're going to be fully virtualized by 2019, and I'm a bit skeptical when I see a, a number like that because uh, you know I'm thinking, boy, this is a huge, uh, you know, they have a huge network of routers and all the other, uh, you know, access, uh, uh, you know, access equipment. Metro equipment, and it's it's even tough to find to get a tally of everything there. Sure, have. sure. You know, so it's it's going to be challenging. It's doable, but you have to be cognizant of the fact that you will have that double opex uh, for a while. Yeah, yeah. Like you said earlier, I mean, obviously, a lot of these aren't going into greenfield deployments. If it's a greenfield deployment, that's one thing. But this is our brownfield, where there's like you said, there's there's billions of dollars worth of equipment already out there. Uh, yeah, and like you said, it's hard to just track it all down. I mean, you don't know what you have out there for the most part, so. Uh, yeah. To virtualize everything, that's a, that's a big challenge, that's for sure. Yeah, if, if you and I go ahead and start a new service provider <laughs> company all on our own, yeah, we are in good shape in that respect. Sure, sure. Well, maybe we'll talk about that after the show. Maybe we can do yeah, something. Nice. But, uh, <laughs> very good. I don't think my current employer will like that, right? <laughs> we'll okay. keep it all down, though. We'll keep it on the side there. But, uh, that's fine. Right. Well, maybe I guess maybe one... We're in our spare time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. An extra five minutes every day, we'll do that. So, uh, uh, well, I guess maybe I find out, as a final wrap-up question, I guess, you know, as you look forward on this, what are maybe some of the bigger cost uh, challenges that you see facing kind of this move towards virtualization? Obviously, uh, you know, we mentioned a lot of them already, but I mean, obviously the challenges, I'm guessing they can be surmounted. I mean, there are a lot of smart people working on these projects, uh, probably get the stuff done, but I guess what do you see as being maybe the big challenges going forward? Uh, you know, the challenge, I think, is more, um, uh, first of all, understanding uh, the technology, uh, you know, uh, at the sea level, you know, they, uh, and also some internal um, consistency in terms of coming to an agreement. You also have, you know, the legacy folks, the folks who work on the PMO, you know, it, it, it's human nature, you get a little threatened, you know, yeah. so... Uh, this is a major and disruptive technology, you know, and actually the word disruptive is not ne necessarily a good thing for a lot of companies, but, but this is a disruptive and it, it has a lot of momentum and, uh, you know, people are going to, co companies are going to go after it. So um, I think most of the challenges will come in terms of, as I said, internal consistency, internal agreements, and, uh, you know, being able to uh, bring everyone to the table and see eye to eye with every, uh, you know, uh, uh, stakeholder in all departments and, uh, you know, move forward. Um, as far as uh, we discussed a little bit, as far as uh, introduction of uh, SDN NFB based infrastructure to a PMO, mm -hmm. you know, you still have some challenge in that respect as well. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a great, that's a great point. I know, I know I've talked to a lot of operators about this, and that's been one of their things that they've mentioned is the fact it is a it's a mind shift for these guys. I mean, again, they're they're changing their whole internal operations, and they've even said, you know, you, you know, they've got tens of thousands of employees, and to get all these people on the same page going in a different direction, that's a, that's a big challenge, and that's that, I think that's something that a lot of them are working through. I mean, I know I know a lot of them have been at the forefront of it and really pushing it, but uh, still a big challenge for those guys. I suggest you know if uh, you know the folks who are driving this. 
they focus on, uh, they should focus on um, the ability, as we talked a little earlier, the ability to uh, have these services uh, very fast, in a high velocity fashion to the market. And, uh, you know, the, the opportunity cost is going to be a lot less in that respect. First of all, if you, if you, uh, if you continue with PMO and you want to, as we said, you want to introduce a new service, at, you, you may uh, find out that this service, this service is going to be very difficult and time consuming to introduce and you will you won't do it so uh, so you will you will have a, a opportunity cost in uh, not doing that right yeah, yeah. But, but with this nfv uh, sdn your 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 opportunity cost is very minimal because yeah. you know very quickly whether the service is going to catch fire or it's going to get dormant pretty quickly yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. Well, again, hey, Robert, great insight on this topic. I mean, obviously, I know from talking to vendors and operators about this, I mean, again, the financial part of this is a big, a big part of the decision making process. And obviously, they're having to juggle a lot of these decisions uh, around inside the organization. So uh, great insight. I definitely recommend those watching uh, to go to the ACG research site there. And you can check out a lot of good information on this as well. Probably contact Robert uh, that way, too. But, uh, but hey, Robert, we definitely appreciate again the time today on this. And uh, hopefully, uh, we, can, we can talk again soon on the topic. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, that sounds great. Well, again, thanks everyone for watching this week's NFESD and Rally Check, and make sure to check us out again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. NFVSD and Reality Check with Dan Meyer is a production of RCR TV. To suggest show topics or to reach Dan, you can find him on email, dmeyer at rcrwireless.com, and on Twitter at Meyer underscore Dan. For more Dan, news on NFVSDN and everything wireless, find your way over to rcrwireless.com.